Hi guys, welcome to iMarket Podcast Season 2, Episode 2. And today our guest in studio is the one and only Julia Gaitho, aka Jules. So most of you know her from the Over 25 channel on YouTube. However, Jules actually started in marketing and business development. Today she's just going to be talking to us about how she came from employment to actually doing a full-time job as a creator, especially after the COVID pandemic hit. How did she overcome those struggles? how can she inspire other people who are looking to be creators as well now one thing you don't know about Jules is that she can sing <laughs> she can write she can sell anything she can sell a pen so today she's just going to be telling us about herself and I hope you get inspired So I just met Jules today, um, a few minutes ago, but her and Candy have been friends for a while now. So Julia, please tell us how you two met. Well, thank you so much for having me on the welcome. iMarket podcast. Oh, welcome. I'm very excited to be doing this podcast with my longtime friend and mentor, Caroline Candy. And it's lovely to meet you. I love this space and I'm happy to be with like-minded people again, in, like in the marketing space. Yeah. Um, so how Candy and I met? Well, we met... <laughs> I would say it's oh, like 10, 11 years ago. I think Imagine I like, that. Yeah, I was like 23. Gosh. Right after yeah. uni. Oh. Actually, when I was still in uni, yeah. I, I was, yeah. I don't know if we can say the name of the company, but we were working at a multinational. Mm -hmm. She was working there as a marketing manager and I came in as an intern. Mm -hmm. So I did internship for three months. Uh, at the time, Candy and I didn't really interact because you we were in a different team mm -hmm. from the team I was in. And then I finished uni, work, went and worked at another company for like six months hated it <laughs> <laughs> and then ABL, there's a trend there's a trend here with I employment and you. <laughs> and i don't know how, i'm like i don't know because i actually don't mind employment mm -hmm. i think it's the t nature of the work but we can get into that yeah. later so yeah. yeah so then i went back into um th thank goodness i'd made some networks um within ABL. so when somebody told me there's a vacancy they're like you need to apply i applied and and I think what helped me is that I had done internship there and I'd worked on the launch. You know when TML was becoming TML started? Yeah. <laughs> Remember back in the, the new day, bottle. The new bottle of Tusca Malt Lager. So I was working... Oh, that's TML. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Tusca yeah. Malt, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in yeah. internally they have a lot of... Um, acronyms. And acronyms. So yeah, so TML was launching and then I was part of that. So I think it helped me because I already understood the mm -hmm. nature of business anything and everything. And then I got back into ABL, and that's when I started to work as a brand exec with Candy. With Candy, yeah. I think it was in Spirits. Initially, you were in Guinness, then yeah. Spirits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's how we met. She was we were working together, mm -hmm. but she was the most miserable brand exec on earth. Was that even those days? <laughs> yeah, I mean, n miserable in the sense that you can do the work, and yeah. I think that's part of the conversation we want to have today. Where it's not about really only being able to do the work, but is it work that gives you joy? And yeah. meaning. And it's meaning, meaning. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think remember we were, talking, we were talking about this earlier and you were saying how you're like, how I become a marketing manager is sending emails the whole day. Yeah, because Candy <laughs> had a really nice car. And I like, I like a life that I aspired to. A, a, a nice group of friends. She was bubbly. She was coming to the office. She used to have her own tricks. Like, she never used to come to the office with a handbag. I'm just telling you, Candy. Uh. <laughs> she used to come with that handbag because I noticed uh, 4.30's baby's out. Yeah. And then she used to come in, hi. And I'm like, okay, okay, I like mm -hmm. this. But then when I started working, I'm mm -hmm. like, wait. So like to get the life and the car and the things that my, the person I'm looking up to has, is lit the, I didn't know work was sending emails. Yeah. I didn't know work was, hi, best regards. <laughs> um, as per my last email, as mentioned. <laughs> and I was, <laughs> like, I was like, I wanted more. I thought there'd be more of my input oh, creatively. Creatively. creatively especially creatively especially creatively yeah. but like for me it's like oh okay so there's a new campaign i'm like oh great so we're gonna do the billboards and then i said okay we, we have to go and uh, this pitching of for, for client uh, for agencies i'm like first of all what's an agency what's a pitch can he's like yeah. follow me we go to the bedroom and, and then i'm seeing this guy is looking haggard mm -hmm. coming everyone to come and pitch us we'll do it like this us we'll do it like this so i was like oh snap um I think that's where I'm supposed to be, but yeah. they look very unhappy. And people in agency are trying to get to this side yeah. where I was as client. So now I was just like, Ugh. yeah. But I think that's that's a very interesting topic, and I think actually it's something which we should discuss with regards to mm -hmm. what ma what a marketing job is and yeah. what marketing is. Because I also remember when I started working, 
I, you know everything that I knew and I studied marketing me right? too so me I thought too. I'm gonna go come to the you know what price promotion wh- what? where you come here you're like oh eh? What the price has been it's very, yeah, the price, we're not changing it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. there are magic price points, Kwanzaa, it's five bob, ten bob, ten, you know. Yeah. So that was know, my so, issue with marketing, actually. So, yeah. I have to say that because we're we are not involved in marketers have to go and sell something. Yeah. But we're not involved in like the value chain to the extent where we know like especially now, like now, like for let's say even packaging distribution mm-hmm. i didn't feel yeah. uh, maybe maybe yeah. upper level management but for me it's like it's like everything comes as is there's a bit of okay there's a meeting guys in production a meeting with this and this and it's marketing guys but then i felt like we're not part of the yeah full thing. but then that's the thing though marketing is a process it's, it's a not pro- a department it's not a department thank you so you see yeah. the marketing thank process you. like especially if you're uh, in an organization customer obsessed so, uh, that time we're in manufacturing right now you, the process of marketing, even the finance guys are part of the process in marketing because they are part of setting up the pricing. The people yeah. don't know but that. Exactly. So the way we, this. and then we were part of, and what we do is we are part of the marketing, which is mostly promotion. So out of the piece, right? It's the promotion. Yeah. It's the promotion. Yeah. But you have to kind of, for you to promote, you need to look at all the others, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think, you know, and that's a good, like, podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Where we'll good, actually yeah. talk about that because I think it's a really good conversation for people to understand. And then even the agency is part of marketing. Let me tell you a funny story. You know, when I was um, before marketing, I didn't study marketing in my undergrad. I did it in my um, post grad. So someone asked me, um, so what do you want to do? I'm like, I want to do marketing. And he's like, um, so what, what exactly in marketing do you want to do? I did. I had no idea. Same thing. I had no idea what marketing was, but I just knew it's a whole world of fun. And yeah. activity and, and whatever and uh, ads. and doing ads yeah <laughs> that, that so a lot of young people don't realize that what they're is, getting into when they yeah. get into it and yeah. maybe that's where you were at that time mm. and let me ask um when you look back was content creation a big deal then and how did you discover that it's a thing for you well content creation didn't exist in the way we know it today because mm. the digital space did not exist in the way we know it today mm-hmm. so so back in the day um first of all i think what even created this craze was on-demand television it's like oh you mean we can decide we don't have to run home at eight o'clock friday to catch mm. yeah um news, news. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like no no I'll, I'll come home at 11 i'll come home at midnight i'll come home at seven and i'll watch whatever so the internet didn't exist the way it did then like now 10 just 10 years ago actually Hmm. um youtube was there but the idea of somebody creating their own channel was like not as big especially on the continent and the continent i mean africa i think abroad there was like a small budding niche of people doing stuff like makeup or how to's it was Mm -hmm. a lot of how to's Mm. um yeah so by the time i got into that space I got into that space six years ago. We're talking, well, this period of how we met, this was maybe 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. So at the time, the internet was not what it was, um, what it is. And actually what made me go like, okay, I got to do this thing, is traveling and studying abroad. So for my postgrad, grad mm-hmm. I did my master's in the UK. I was in London. Mm-hmm. University of Greenwich, what's up? <laughs> um, and... I was struggling with consumption of TV there because I'm like, hey, British TV mm. is different. Mm. I'm yeah. not understanding. Eventually, I liked just, it so Just speak in that accent. Although, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, like, it's a more. The London one. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <So> we apologize. <laughs> literally, yeah. Yeah. So I was I'm literally <laughs> like, yeah. What, what Sometimes I switch saying? up. I'm what just like, saying? hey, are you joking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, eventually I got into it. I, got, I was like, okay. In fact, when I came back to Kenya, I was like, I, uh, Kenyan TV is very Americanized. Yeah. We are mm. doing too much Kardashian, too much whatever, yeah. whatever. Anyway, so I'm sitting there and I'm just like, um, I didn't have, I, I, I didn't have a TV. I think in the UK you had to get a license to own a TV, like you need a TV license, something, something, something. I'm in uni. I'm just like, all right, what do I have? I have the internet. I have my laptop. So I started watching stuff on YouTube. And then I start to watch stuff. And now I guess because of where I'm at, I'll go thinly. Mm-hmm. A lot of UK content creator, creators were coming onto my radar. Yeah. And I was like, oh my goodness. What did I just, what is this? Yeah. You can just like get a camera and then like do stuff. <gasps> and you're like, I can do it. I can, I do, can it. do it. So this. I was like, I didn't have the, I didn't have, I was like, as soon as I go back home, I'm going to do this with my friends. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to do it alone because I was very scared of exposing myself. Like, 
alone and then mm. you know setting myself yeah. up almost like a like a, a duck waiting to be shot what do they say a duck you're a sitting a, duck you're a sitting <laughs> duck so I was like when I go back home I'm gonna do this with my friends we're gonna do da, 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 da. like that was my vision when I go home when I go home yeah. so that's what inspired it going abroad and seeing it and even then UK internet was not what it is now yeah but when I came back to Kenya I know I think it was only like um um this is s who actually used to work at Capital FM yes um and and Susan Wong, they had a podcast, mm-hmm. the two, our two cents, yeah. and a little bit of Nancy Mwai. Nancy Mwai, yes. Sylvia Njoki. Yeah, those were the OGs, but yeah. they were, they were, you could count them on one hand. Yeah, true. Um, So, yeah, so that's how now and that's, it's five kids. That's a really good point, because when you came back, you still came back into employment. I came back into employment. Let's I talk about here. that. Yeah, okay. here, because I think, I think it would be interesting to hear how did you then make the decision to yeah. actually leave and be like, look, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Well, my dis- my my man. Let me tell you guys, my journey with my career is such a long one. I I could literally write a book about it. I think you should. I could. Yeah. It's a rate. Like I just do. I do a whole awkward black girl. I'm like, I create a script because it's been like this. It's been a weird journey. And Kendi was there for a lot of that. Uh, I don't know. Like I was always like, what am I doing here? <laughs> but then I don't know where to go. And I'm like just, you know, you know, I'm like just just like, raise the PO, you'll be fine. Oh <laughs> RFQ. Go go get the uh, finance RFQ upstairs. I'll never forget to do that for quotation. Quotation RFQ. Then you have to go I was like, this is work. I, yeah. I'm like, what is this? Like, yeah, these guys who are driving these cars, this is what they do. We used to think there's something else. But I was shocked. Know, marketing is as fun as it gets when you when you look at all the career options. So I'm sure you're wondering, so what's next? If it's not marketing, I mean surely I can't go to You're right. So that's the thing other because industries. I come from a yeah. background where it's like you go to school, you get a degree, mm-hmm. you get a job, get good benefits with okay, so you can get a nice car loan, so you health insurance, health and medical insurance. Mm-hmm. So that is what I knew is the blueprint mm-hmm. that I'm I'm going mm-hmm. to follow. And and I've never been I've always been a chick of the system. Like and what I mean is I don't I'm not a rebel. Mm-hmm. Well I wasn't a rebel. So even in high school I never used to understand this you know these kids who are caught smoking yeah. and then they expelled I'm like when you guys are not scared why? Yeah, like, you didn't know you'd be caught honestly. <laughs> I was never that person mm-hmm. until I got into employment and I'm like, I can't do this. Like, I was now relating to those people who I used to be like, you guys are sh- such rogues. Yeah. Because now I want to leave that system. I was just not fitting in. Okay. Um, I had never experienced that feeling of discomfort in my soul in a space. I always used to go in and blend. Wherever you mm-hmm. put me, I'll figure it out. Mm. So having this discomfort, and it's not something that is there for a day. It's every day for years. <laughs> you can feel it. It even affected my mental health. Yeah. yeah. So that's when I was like, what's going on? Because me, I'm like, I've prayed for this job. I've gotten it. And then by there at that time, getting a job in this company where I was with in Kendi. For a girl my age, that was... Uh, that was big deal. Just that a was big a big deal. deal. Mm. Yeah. I didn't even see it as a big deal. Because I'm like, guys, we just write emails and do RFQs for right. real. You yeah. know, I, I, it's not when I left, later I'm like, Anyewe, I get it. Looking back, it's like, yeah. how could you have... It's And it's the method to the madness. You know, mm. it's, I always say, you know, when somebody sees an ad, there's all the other stuff that goes behind, be, behind the scenes, right? Oh, right? And that's what we do on a day-to-day yes. basis. You're responsible. And now even, even when you're creating your own content, there's still the admin stuff and the planning stuff that you have to do so wh- what made you make the what jump maybe make, 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 make the the jump because yeah. i remember we had this conversation so here's where i was like go and sing talk to somebody right, yeah, sure, do, sure. do creatively do express you're yourself you're happy, yeah yeah i used to like really go because candy is the only person who was like she was not in my boss eh? she was my boss's boss mm-hmm. this was a this was a big she deal a, i but yeah, again i didn't realize me i'm just like candy <laughs> By the way, I'm not feeling... Then you, like, she's like, you know, you, you're a creative. And I'm like, no, I'm not a creative. Because back in the day, being a creative was not cool. Yeah. It was... Creatives were put rebels. in a corner. It was actually been re- rebels. They just used to come they to... Were work. They were actually introverted. Introverted. In a corner doing graphic design. Exactly. And then yeah. where, the companies used yeah. to, <laughs> where the companies used to position them. They're always in the back room at the back. And they come to work with home clothes. They're not respected. Right. And I'm like, I'm not that. <laughs> yeah. I want to be respected. Yeah. I've gone to school. I don't want to just, you know what I mean? I like, so I was clothes. not. I can't yeah, believe you said like, they oh, come in home clothes. comes in home clothes, actually. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, what you're saying, they're just yeah. wearing jeans then, you know. But like, you see, it's the way they're like, ah, actually, casual. you know these creatives, even yeah, the people who talk yeah, about them, like, yeah. these creatives. Actually, they haven't even sent us the, the, the script. Actually, these creatives, these creatives. So mm. I was like, I don't want to be looked at like that. 
So, and then you so I used to even say, I wish I was failing at everything. Adi, my folks are like, eh, you just would be a creative. Yeah. But I was not yeah. unsuccessful in the careers that I was in. So what made me do that jump anyways is having this feeling of disillusionment when I got into the workspace. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and then I was in EABL for almost three years. Um, and then I decided to go back to uni. Before mm-hmm. going back to uni to do my master's degree, I decided, let me take this gap, this like eight months, a year to figure things out as I'm getting my visa. It was my excuse to just be like, okay, what's up? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I, Kendi introduced me to a music producer. I started singing. Uh, they made me lead singer of the band. What? <laughs> and then, <laughs> but there was no money in it. Yeah. So I was broke. Thank mm-hmm. God I was still living in my mom's house. But mm-hmm. that's the first time I realized the dignity is tied to your money. I had a certain lifestyle. We go out on Friday, we do this, do this, do this. But now I, I lost my inner circle, I lost my friends. Like I could I didn't have that. So anyway, I go to uni and when I come back to Kenya, because of the trauma I had after mm-hmm. leaving employment and getting into music and painting, I also used to paint and sell my paintings. That's how I was able to like sustain myself. Mm-hmm. When I came back, I was like in fact, even before I landed, I was like, I'm not going back to Kenya if I don't have a job because I'm not going back to whatever that was. Mm-hmm. It was very, it was a traumatic time for me. Yeah. And in fact, by the time I came, I already had this job. Like I had already made some networks here prior to, this, by here I'm in Capsule FM, and then I came back. By the first month of working here, those feelings came back. I was like, guys, <laughs> what's wrong with me? No, guys, it's funny now, but you know when you're on the desk and you're like, why am I here? Holy cow. And then the next person next to you, because I'm, I've been in marketing for a long time, right? Yeah. And I've never had this. So, so, it, so and I too. see that, and me, I'm just like, whoa, yeah. whatever, whatever. Like, enjoy that, enjoy it. It's yeah. fun. <laughs> I used to be like, how comes I'm not like these people? Like, yeah. what's happening? And again, I'm not a rebel. So this thing, Maze, it really, really messed me up. Um, but I, because of what I'd gone through, not having an income and not having, just not knowing what what I'm about, that mm-hmm. what one and a half years before I left, I was able to stay in this job for four years, almost five, I think. And what kept me was, you're not going back there. Mm-hmm. Now, did I like that job? Not really. Did I hate it? No. If I had an opportunity to leave, I would have. The reason I didn't leave earlier is because I didn't know to what. Okay. Like I told you, the internet was not what it was. So I didn't know what I'm living for. Yeah. There are people who are like, I want to be a musician. I want to be an artist. Mm. I want to be an entrepreneur. I didn't even know what that was for me. I just felt like this wasn't it. Mm-hmm. So I had, there was a lot of benefits staying into employment. I, I benefited a lot even from ABL. Like I'm telling you, my networks, Mm. from back in the day are still active now. They get me into rooms now. So everything had a place Mm -hmm. in my life and I Mm -hmm. think it still does. Mm -hmm. So what made me leave in the end was just that I think I'd reached, I was like at the end. I was at the end and I started a few side, I had started a side hustle and I really started content creation and my side hustle at the time was giving me more income than this. But I was like, no, but I want the assurance that I'm getting a salary. Mm. So one day my mom sat me down and she's like, where's Hera? How happy are you in your job from zero to a hundred? Unhappy, how unhappy are you? Then I said, mm, like 75%. So she said, 75? <laughs> I thought you're gonna say 50, because 50 <laughs> it's okay. is okay. Just... And I thought when I said 70, I, mean, I was gonna say 90, but I wanted to say 70 so she can say, you know, it's okay. you can work with 30%, yeah. you can pray, you can whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. But she said 70, you need to just leave, you have my blessing. I'm like, mom, right. I have your blessing, but I need an income. And at that time, you know, I'm not young, so I'm not, I don't want to go through that thing again. But she kept on reassuring me, she's like, you're a different person from that time. You already have an income from mm-hmm. these other things. Now just figure out how you can blow it up. And also prayer, uh, honestly, for me, prayer works. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's not an easy thing to jump. And I would not encourage anybody, leave your job. I'd yeah. never give them that advice. And I think that is exactly my next question. Okay. Because you don't look like somebody struggling. Yeah. Which means you're making some money. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I think the, 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 the issue on why anyone would stay in a job that they don't like is because of the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the practicality of you need to eat, you need a lifestyle, you need to do stuff. Exactly. So, and I think for me, what I would want us to just really understand is that money doesn't only come from a job, right? And the, the opportunity that we have with the internet and being connected to the internet now, a bundle can do so much for you. So what's your story on how now you actually moved um, into that space of, I need to get money, and not only through the internet, even your side hustle, yeah. but how you just came into this space of, look, I'm going to make money, and how does that work? 
Well, um, some of these things you stumble into. <coughs> some of them you see opportunities mm -hmm. um, as you once you're in it. Mm. Um, there's a duality inside me, and I think it also shows with I'm here and here and here. Those I I, I do want to be a creative through and through, but I do also do want to be a, a corporate chick through and through. I wanted the work I do to I, I am able to um, utilize my interests and my and my gifts. Right. So when it comes to making money from the internet, what happened actually it was not even through content creation. The reason I started my YouTube channel, uh, well the initial YouTube channel which was over twenty five with with three of my friends was because like I told you, that creep, that feeling was coming back for what am I doing here? I don't fit in with anybody in this office. I don't know who are my people. I don't even know if I like this job. Marketing, I don't even know if I believe in marketing. <laughs> Why are we inflating truths? Is it true? Okay, it's kind of true. So anyway, I like there was a lot of conflict within me. And then um, I was like, when that feeling came back, I was like, okay, I need a creative outlet. Mm -hmm. So actually, I think what made me stay longer here is because I had this mm -hmm. thing on Saturdays because I used to shoot it, edit it, everything. Mm -hmm. So I used to be like, okay, this can be this this and and to be fair, I wasn't like anyway. So I, I, the the thing is that I was able to have a creative outlet, um, and then I didn't. Uh, and eventually, when one of my friends in the, in the group was like, "Why don't we start to monetize this?" I was like, "This is now when the problems will start." Initially, yeah. I was not seeing it as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Me, I was just seeing it. Like, Me, I want my outlet because. I've, re I've resigned to the reality that this is my life, mm -hmm. where I always feel like I'm not happy in my job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I even I tell myself, when you said you have to be happy in a job, first of all, <laughs> what, what are these lies? The lies we tell yeah. ourselves. <laughs> I know, me, I was like, these are, these are this, this new age. Yeah, I was telling myself so many things just to give myself momentum to stay. Um, but then when we started, so we what happened, we started to grow and we grew mm -hmm. quite fast. And then we started being approached by brands. So I was like, oh my God, we have to start doing dates <laughs> and pitches. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> See, Kwani <laughs> Kitwe. Just chasing yeah. you. You know? But then, like, hang on. I don't think I have a problem doing this for this. Yeah. Enjoy it, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I had a problem. You know, it's like wherever you go, you find challenges, but you decide which is the challenge I can stomach. Mm. So all my skills. Especially in this job, particularly where I was in Capital, my role I used to I was client facing. I'm mm -hmm. talk, talking big budgets, da da da, mm -hmm. things that would previously intimidate me, you know. And we had a very high, what do you call it, very competitive culture within my department, which I used to be like, this is so unhealthy, so what? But then those are the things that helped me, mm. yeah, um, sell myself where where I was, yeah. So when 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 over twenty five started to make money, I was like, okay, so to me really marketing, I guess sour. Mm -hmm. But then I realized this is not. I can do. I prefer mm. this. I prefer to do this. Um, and then, what happens is um, so okay, you grow because you know the thing is with marketing, and this high C you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Marketing is about, we're well, not about, but it's driven by audiences. Mm -hmm. As long as you have an audience, even if your audience is because you. I don't know. You cook a lot of food and you get one thousand people in your restaurant every day. Someone will like come and say, "Can we, can we put uh, mm. posters here for this, this, and that?" As long as you have eyeballs, as long as you have an mm. audience, mm. that's an opportunity for you. Absolutely. That is your. Mm. That is your. That's your thing. That's your. What's the word I'm looking for? But it's that's your greatest value. asset. That's, that's your value. value. That's your value. So that's when I started to see that. You know. <clears throat> so I was like, okay, fine. I need to be able to take care of this audience and not treat them as. Um, a commodity. Mm. This audience, I need to remember, they're human, and we are very, we are very sophisticated audiences nowadays. Eh? Yeah. You can't be like just talking here at and say, yeah. In fact, it was so hot that day, I was so thirsty. Let me pick my 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 bottle of water, <laughs> branded water. People will be like, this is an ad. Yeah. You actually yeah. realize that you're being you're watched. being yes. exactly. So now audiences are different. So you're yeah. learning that and saying, mm. oh, you have to tell them, yeah, me, I'm different nowadays. I say, it's time to make some money. Today, this episode is sponsored by. Can this t-shirt, the one she's wearing? Yeah. <laughs> like that, like that. You know, tell them. So those are things I started to learn when I'm in and, there. And what was the first, like, pay, pay the payment that you got and you're like, hey, this thing is actually real. It's not... Uh, it's, actually, not, it's not yeah. an out creative outlet anymore. It's actually, it's actually something a, a that business. I can... Yeah. I don't think I remember which one specifically, but I know one big one that we got, mm -hmm. which was um, a beverage company, and it was over a million shillings, and I was just like... What? 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 Yeah. Hold on, guys. And imagine that's the <laughs> and kind of. And the only reason yeah. they gave us that is because this guy came and he's like, 
listen, my brand exec or I guess brand manager, I don't know what the department was ranked. Eh? Mm-hmm. It's like, me, I don't know what this digital thing is. But in fact, this brand, let's call it Pen. This this brand, in fact, we are shelving it. But this this babe, she's really insisting that, you know, digital is where it's at. So I'm giving you guys this thing. My budget is only 200,000. One month, that was our, like our first, like, oh my god, over 100k. What? So, like, we'll do it. We push this thing, push this thing. This game invited us for dinner. Now, the, mm-hmm. the marketing manager, or the against marketing director, he's like, me, I don't like to blow people's horns, but, uh, and I don't buy people for dinner, but we were discontinuing this brand. In fact, in the meetings, we never used to discuss this brand because we knew it's not yeah. selling. Yeah. Imagine. At, we used to ship in one container per quarter. And now they were shipping three per month, something like that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Or is it 18? No, six times. It was 18. 18 Mm -hmm. per month versus one per quarter. It was not selling. And that is from your audience. uh, Because he was like, there was no other place that they were pushing. So he was just testing this thing. So he said, so now I'm giving you this this amount of money. Go crazy. I won't even give you a brief. Like, I think you guys know what you're doing. Yeah. So that's when I was like, all right, guys, like... And there's something here. And I think right. that's such a powerful thing about value, right? Because, yes, you can have the eyeballs. So first, there's two things that, which I hear from you. You can have the eyeballs, but you have to see what is the value of that eyeballs to somebody, right? In this case, the value of this, because once they started realizing sales, that's when they came to invest more. Yeah. Yeah, there's nobody who puts money where, and that's this, this, the way business works, right? You put money, you have to get a return out of, out of it. Yeah. So I think it's really powerful to see how actually a channel a youtube channel can actually transform a business yes and let me actually say something about that because <coughs> one of the things i've always struggled with in marketing when well, as a marketer i think i still am a marketer is that a lot of marketing is shooting in the dark there's a lot of assumptions mm-hmm. uh, and let's be sincere not mm-hmm. all of us make marketing decisions using data mm-hmm. at all we mm-hmm. know that our audience is listening between 10 and 12 and there are 10,000 of them we are not yeah. sure every time the agency might say okay this is what the the, the the tracking company has said but you you don't know for sure especially with traditional marketing yeah and by traditional marketing obviously i'm talking about tv, TV radio, radio print mm-hmm. outdoor billboards so you have a billboard oh yeah yeah we have foot traffic of one million but do you, and out of that one million, how many are looking at that thing? And out of yeah. those who are looking, how many have internalized? And out of those who have internalized, how many have gone to, how, how many have you converted? You can't do that with traditional You're actually marketing. actually a marketer. Look at you. Yeah, yeah. I know, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, look at you. But then with digital, That's it. I'll be like, listen, out of this video, I have 50,000 views. I have 400 comments. You're able to see, this is how many people have watched. This is yeah. how many people, what is what people feel about your brand? Because you can ask people a question and they respond in the comment right. section. Apple, it's yeah. measurable. There was a lot of n- lack of measurability in mm. traditional marketing. It wa- I'm not saying it didn't work. It worked because you'd see results. Yeah. But I think maybe there was a huge chunk of revenue which you, which you are not sure. Yeah. True. If it has, there was a lot of shooting in the dark. So that's why you had finance and marketing at your head. Exactly. Because yeah. they are yeah. like, where is the ROI? True. Yeah. They're like, but this is brand awareness. How do you measure awareness? How do you measure the impact of awareness? And the most powerful tool of marketing to date, they say, even with all these f- fancy things, they've said at the end of the day, the most powerful tool of marketing is word of mouth. I think digital marketing is um, like an upgraded word of it mouth. It is word of mouth. Because it's Julia yeah. is like, I'm using this brand. <coughs> Maybe I don't like it as much as Paula. Mm-hmm. But what I do like about it, is that you can put it in your handbag. That's my actual genuine opinion about this product. Yeah. And you now, I am able to give you some consideration. Yeah. To right. have that because Jules, you know. Mm. Yeah. And the thing about digital marketing is the type of investment you put in is not as much as what you put in in traditional media. Right. I need like a whole studio for TV. I need like a whole ad for TV. But like for Jules to create um, content, um, she just needs a phone. So maybe you can tell us, how did you start creating content? I know you just didn't start with expensive mics and everything. Yeah, yeah. So like how, this. Like yeah. <laughs> studio. <laughs> yeah. So what is the bare minimum for content creation? Mm. So I do have to say something there. Um, it's not just a phone, eh? The thing is, we need now people in marketing to start investing in digital marketing. Mm-hmm. Because what's happening is they're like, ah, so you just do a video. It's because they're they, they are still not understanding the investment that goes into this. Mm-hmm. The more you start doing this podcast, you realize even how energetically it just spends you for, 
when you're done with one episode. So, so I think sometimes, you mean, some, some, some would come to me and say, I only have 30 Gs and I want you to do this for a month. I'm like, are you joking? Mm. I charge 80K for one video mm-hmm. because I know what goes in to eat. Okay? If you're going to do this on traditional media, how much is it to do a spread on a... On a on, yeah. On the newspaper, one million for one day. I'm like, can you just give, put some respect on my name? Yeah. Okay, and, more. and I like the conversation because also as marketing people, the conversations now is really about efficiency of where your money is going to. Mm. Back to your point, True. when you look at why, why the debate between traditional versus digital is yeah. digital. All of a sudden, you're able to measure effectiveness of your campaign. Exactly what you, I love this story where you're saying based on this conversation that I had, I, this group of girls were able to articulate the benefit of this product in a way that got 18 containers to be bought. Yeah. That 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 for me is the power because now I can measure that spend. Now when I'm giving you an extra million, and that's how you get more money, I think. If it works, then you get more money. But it's because you can actually measure cause and effect. So I really think that that's an important conversation that everyone, and that's why, like, we, at, at Safaricom right now, our target, actually, of the overall, you can imagine, the Safaricom budget, overall, mm. 40% goes to digital. Oh, that's amazing. 40%, yeah. and I know for other brands, it's even higher, because the opportunity for digital is there, because it is an efficient way of spending. And now, I have great conversation with my finance guys, because I'm like, this money is going to deliver this more value, right? And even the challenge that I have, even with traditional um, uh, media, is I'm always like, guys, the, the, and, that's, and the only reason we're doing that is because that's where the customer is. Yeah. The customer yeah. is on the phone The customer now. is on the phone. On the the customer is on all these platforms. So mm-hmm. I, my job is to get my customer to see my product and to co- to connect to them, right? Yeah. So if that's where they are, what are the meaningful ways that I can connect that is going to drive the outcome of them choosing me versus the other guy? Yeah. 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 So I don't know if I answered your question. You had asked me... Bare minimum. Oh, bare minimum. Yeah. So when we first started, <coughs> like, let's say over 25, we used to shoot on a phone. Mm-hmm. You're right. We didn't even have a tripod. Our tripod was a stack of books in my bedroom. What is a tripod? <laughs> a tripod is the thing is that the holds thing the camera. Like you see that? You see that? You see that? That's a ring light. Oh, oh a that's a ring light. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, try uh, a tripod. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes. And then there's another fancy thing that I always ring say. Light. I'm like, ring who your influencer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just there, we can be sitting with yeah. Jules having a drink. They just hold on. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So ring light. Uh-huh. Ring lights. Yeah. So no, I we just started with a phone. Um. And actually, we used we used to use one of my co-host's phones because she was mm-hmm. the nicest. And then we didn't have a tripod, so I we I I, I used to, we stacked like ten books on my dresser, and then we put the phone there, and then we sat in front of the mirror because you see we don't have anyway. We, we just let me tell you, uh-huh. just DIY. We sat in front of the mirror because we wanted to see ourselves. We were very yeah. self-conscious, and then the camera is shooting us, and then we talk. Wow. And then I take the footage, and then I used to use my dad's laptop to edit because my laptop was so. It could not hold um, um like you need you need a go, you need storage a storage and speed. So my laptop okay. was just um, I'm really trying to not see the brand, not, <laughs> not see the brand, and not to say the F one yeah. because it was a shit laptop. You cut that out. I had a shit laptop. Anyway, I had a very I had a basic laptop. It couldn't um, accommodate the software for editing, mm-hmm. so I used to use my dad's. But then at one day, I one day I was just like, listen, Father is going to open this thing one day. And here are things like, because okay. <laughs> you used to like, what are you people doing in that bedroom? I'm like, yeah. we're shooting content. What's that? Yeah. Ah, it's just for, for, for social media. When you say social like, media I'm blank, blank. Okay. they're like, I know. you? <laughs> so yeah, so that's how we started. Okay. Um, I, I, I was just like so happy to find a place that I can finally express myself creatively because I was kind of like done with the painting. I had a lot of trauma connected to my painting. That's a story for another day because I was very sad and broke those days. So I wasn't <laughs> able to pick a paintbrush. I still struggle mm, with that. Mm. So I was like, this is a new thing. I can't yeah. eat. I can sit in front of a camera. I love to talk and I have so many things to say. Oh my gosh, we're going to do it. So that was the basic minimum. Wow. Um, basic, basic content calendar. So basically just like saying we're going to shoot this, this and this. Okay. And then I used to be like, whoever shows up, shows up. It wasn't a thing, all four of us have to come. In fact, we started just the three of us. Initially, it was two, then three. Mm-hmm. Eventually, Ivy joined us, we became four. Um, yeah, and we were just doing it for fun at the time. At the time, because mm. there was no, there was not any support from brands. We didn't, yeah. In fact, it's the girls who used to say, I you know one day we'll be sponsored. I'm like, guys, we're not doing decks. We're not doing, <laughs> I didn't want to write proposals again. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful because you're doing what you're passionate about. Yeah. And when yeah. you do what you're passionate about, then the money comes. I'm such a believer yeah. in find Passions. your joy. Yeah. Because when you find your joy, you even, you do your 10,000 hours. You know, they talk about like 
in Malcolm Gladwell. He said, Malcolm. for you to be an expert, you need to do 10,000 hours of something. Of something you cannot yeah. do 10,000 hours of something you don't, you like. don't like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. You can't. Yeah. And therefore, you'll never become an expert. So when you, you're doing so, what you're passionate about yeah. and what, is, what, what you love, yeah. then you even work over, you know, when you're working overtime, you're not seeing it as work. It's not some, something that's taking uh, away from you. Yeah. My question is on that, because now, I guess now, you, your work is actually where you get your money from, right? Mm-hmm. And, in the world of employment is when we're talking about it earlier we can go and leave and you still get your paycheck mm-hmm. so you, what happens and how do you manage your finances and how you how you you manage your money in a world where it's your effort that dictates the money and that you make and how do you take a break how do you not burn out yeah so this is something that i'm actually still working on but um one of this when you there's something you guys have what they call which i envy a regular income I have an irregular income. Yeah. I might have long-term contracts. I have contracts that maybe last me six months, one year, so I'm okay, fine, this is what's coming in this year. I have some that just come in, one campaign, one campaign. Um, but when you have irregular income, so this is something I learned from a finance training. That's what I did. Like when people be like, oh, these are, like there's a workshop for training on finance. Blah, blah, blah. I always go for those things because I'm mm. like, I'm in a different space now. I don't have a salary the way I used to have yeah. a salary. So I have to be very, very careful how I spend my money. Mm-hmm. I need to have emergency fund. I need to think about my retirement fund. I need to have my general savings. And then what is my day-to-day expense, like spending? So for me, how I do that is I, 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 my, 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 I don't want to call it emergency fund, but I may get a little bit into finances. This is just a tip. Mm. You have an irregular income, but you have regular expenses. The things mm-hmm, that you cannot right. avoid. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you have, when you get a good paycheck, you need to be able to cover your those regular expenses for at least three, four, five months. Mm-hmm. You don't just say, "Hey, I've gotten five sock. Now we go to cost. Then we ni 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 ni." Mm. So this is where I'm at right now. Where it's like, okay, fine. I've gotten five sock. Fantastic. The client is happy. How much is my rent? Can I pay for twenty for four months? And yeah. then those emer- the emergency fund. I bump it up like 30% and mm-hmm. add there, add there, add there. Then I spend. Mm-hmm. Because what happens with content creation, you are the brand. You are the, mm-hmm. if I fall sick, if I need to go and leave, if I'm having a creative block, I can't take a week off because that week I need to do content for Candy. But then Candy's like, I cannot pay you this for this one because you're missing one week. You can't invoice. So yeah. You, your rent is due at the end of the month, but you're one week short, so you get paid a week later. Mm. Maybe even these guys are here telling you, we only process uh, <laughs> payments on the 15th. After 90 days. Exactly. After 90 days. <laughs> so that's how I mean, this finance, guys. Yeah. So you really have to think think about it like that. Yeah. Mm. Um, entrepreneurship, I, I, being in this kind of life, is not for the faint-hearted. Um, you have to have so much, like, like self positive self-conversation, like self-belief. And grit. And greet, yeah, because what ha- because you can really dissuade yourself easily. Mm. You can really talk yourself out of out of opportunities. You can talk yourself into a negative mindset. So mindset is very important. Right. Believing your own hype and discipline. Honestly, any person in entrepreneurship, anyone in business, I'm sure you guys, I'm sure you also have said her mm. If you don't have, imagine discipline is the number one thing. So there's something you said about loving what you do. I need, to tell, I need to say something. Whoever was listening to this, who wants to get into the creative space, um, it's not that there's, when you do something you love, at there are no challenges. Agreed. At, at you won't feel like yuck. <laughs> there are days I wake up and I'm like, I don't want to shoot because I'm not feeling yeah. it. Mm. But I'm able to, for me, that's a molehill. That's a whole hill of a challenge. Like I can, I can, I can work through that. Mm-hmm. But having a, a negative attitude towards the employment, it is harder for me to get past that. There's challenges. It's just you picking which challenge. Mm-hmm. So, for example, somebody's a pianist, and they come and tell you they write this book, and they're like, you know, to be a successful pianist, you need to do ten thousand hours. I did four hours of practice every day for five years. Da-da-da-da. And you're like, oh my gosh, so that's what I need to do to be a successful pianist. Mm-hmm. And then maybe you have a child who has sung one song. <laughs> and you're like, she's, oh, she's done one lesson of piano. And you're like, now you have to do four hours every day like this guy. Yeah. But the thing is, if this, what I'm trying to say is, you have to also peel the layer of what somebody's giving you advice on. You are able to sit and do, somebody's able to do those four hours every day. And they, they, but, they, 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 but then they're not telling you, it was 
it was like a painful it was a sweet pain mm. i enjoyed this struggle mm. so you you're like i want to be i want to do four hours every day of piano but it, y- you 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 hate it yeah. you know it's not the it's not the challenge you're with, willing to um, it's not the hill. It's not the hill you're the hill. willing to die on. It's not the hill you're willing to die on. So the point is, everywhere you go, there's going to be challenges. Mm. Whatever you do, there's going to be challenges. Somebody will come and say, in fact, like now you say, everyone is like, you have to do business. Not everyone is built for entrepreneurship. Not everyone is built for employment. Mm. But it's like, what? Which is it? What is it that you can? There's somebody who will be so successful in employment and do everything that they've ever. All their dreams are achieved through employment whereas somebody else is just like I don't have the same buzz you have mm, yeah. or there are people who hate what they are doing at work but what do they get at the end of the month a salary to do what they love mm, and yeah. they're happy with that mm. yeah they're happy with that mm, arrangement mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. whereas there's somebody who needs to be intrinsically involved in their work for them to feel a sense of belonging they are like now me I'm like I, I the thing that I'm going waking up to do it needs to make sense yeah mm. more than even money which sometimes can be a bad thing but it needs to make sense <laughs> yeah somebody's like me I don't care what I do even if I'm sweeping see me I'm getting my mm. 150k right and the, I can now do the thing I love on the weekend with my kids mm-hmm. with my family that that is where my importance is mm. so you figure out what your thing is and then go with it and go and go and go but the most important thing is figuring it out because mm. for me it didn't come easy um I have friends who were in media way before me and with actually in a podcast i mean um, it's called irip it's related i promise one of my co-hosts was like um oh yeah i always knew i wanted to be a journalist since mm-hmm. i was like three six years old seven years old mm-hmm. guys that's a blessing me personally i just knew i loved art i liked music i liked this but i didn't know what the product was yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. you can have interests but you don't know how can you um monetize it So that that figuring out process I think it takes a lot of patience. Mm. A lot of it can be painful, it can be confusing, but if if this is something if you want to do the kind of thing that you love and make money out of it because not all not all hobbies are what needs have to be um income mm. and mm. but if you want to if you want to do what you love and make money out of it there there needs to be you have to go through a clarity phase. Right. Mm. Mm. Now most people know you from over 25 but i know when covid hit everyone had to you know stay at home isolate da, 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 da. so tell us about you as an individual creator and what opportunities you got from the pan- uh, like after the pandemic or during the pandemic right so the pandemic hit um in fact that's when i had just resigned so i'm just like god the <laughs> jehova <laughs> But I remember feeling okay so let me tell you the real truth. You guys want the real real truth? The oh, real, yeah. real. So the real truth is <laughs> when we're told now we have to stay home. Okay so I'd always wanted to start my own YouTube channel mm-hmm. but I was like now who will listen to me? What am I going to say? Mm. And then I don't want to destabilize the flow on over 25. I right. now do that's going to create her own thing. Yeah. You know like you're just you, you just uh, you know. So now we're told you have to stay home. So now over 25 or 4, right? Um mm-hmm. we, ha- we 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 couldn't meet because we were encouraged to have social distance and even if the people who were still meeting to shoot content for us we are four on one set mm. plus the videographer plus the And that was guy. the time when I mean even social distance it, it was it was it was serious it, was serious. it wasn't what it is it now It was like when you used to leave the house and you shower at the door before you enter you throw your clothes you at the door <laughs> you shower I guess you and like, you leave the house people are not leaving it yeah. was scary actually this thing was like a death sentence mm. at the beginning mm. yes, yeah. I was so scared mm-hmm. so now how do the four of us come and we're like hi guys welcome <laughs> to our channel I'm here 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 I guess we like There's, where is the social distance where is yeah. the money where is the sanitization so i am um, over 25 took a hit kidogo at at first in the beginning mm-hmm. where we couldn't meet to shoot so we said okay let's meet to two then we this a bit of space so because clients were still there but optically it needed to make sense mm. But for me I took that opportunity. I was like, "Oh, so now that we can't meet, I can start my own YouTube channel." And then because I didn't have so much confidence in oneself, I called it my tiny little channel. So if it fails, I'd be like, "But I told you it's a tiny little channel." Like, guys. Right. You know. I mean, what? 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 See, I told you. I in fact one of my one of my followers was like, "Julia, you need to stop calling yourself tiny this mm, tiny this yeah. minimizing Small, stop yeah. minimizing yourself i have a problem yourself. with that because mm. i'm always like let me wait first and see mm-hmm. in fact there's one thing if this ad- advice i'd say is like believe your own hype <laughs> because it'll get you far anyway yeah. so for me the pandemic was such an opportunity for me and there's something i didn't mention earlier that actually the internet has been huge for me in this is that when i was working in employment 
I needed more money. I needed more income. I wasn't mm-hmm. getting the money I wanted in the, the job I had at the time. Mm-hmm. So um, I started to really... I had a challenge with my skin. Like my skin I used to break out. I have acne prone skin. Mm-hmm. So Patricia Kihora, who is also a content creator and actor and all around creative, she posted on her YouTube channel the, the Korean t- skin. The, I watched it. The ten step Korean <laughs> yes. skincare routine. Yeah. And I was like, hey, 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 hey. I want okay, to. I, I, I don't know about this. <laughs> Let me know. Like, where is it? Honey. You send me the link. Ten steps. By mm-hmm. the way, mm-hmm. in fact, maybe that's another thing I can say. From your greatest despair can come out your greatest opportunities mm-hmm. because that's how content creation started for me. I was like, I need a creative outlet. Yeah. And then I started this business because my skin was not working. So I would watch Patricia Kihoro's thing, and I'm like, okay, these maretinols and vitamin Cs and whatever, whatever. Where do you get them? Mm-hmm. Then okay, there's this page on IG that's mm-hmm. selling, not mm-hmm. a physical shop because there's a lot of in, in fact online shops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this online shop and I'm like, man, one serum is three Gs and mm-hmm. I need two, and then it's an every month thing. Sis, I can't do it. <laughs> so I started figuring out where do I get these things outside of. I didn't want to get them in like from mm-hmm. Amazon because sometimes with skincare it can be tricky. Mm-hmm. So I'm calling my cousins abroad. Then I'm calling my cousin who used to bring things from China. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, able find me the, the supplier in Korea. Like, I did my homework. Then I was like, okay, fine. What I'll do is I'll buy from them because it's cheaper. It was maybe like $6. Then I was like, okay, shipping is another CG. What, what, what? It was becoming expensive because of shipping. But the product was cheaper when you ship. Then I said, okay, so maybe what I'll do, I'll buy, instead of buying one, I buy five. Then I ship them in. Because you see the weight is the same for one or five. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let me buy five. So the shipping fee is the same amount. Then those five, I see, maybe, if I post on my IG, I'm selling. So I, then I sell at a profit. Then the profit will cover my cost for the one that I yeah. want. Mm-hmm. I need that. I thought I'll take like a month. It's so a like, very solid p I know. <laughs> like, <that's laughs> so you remember me asking you what a PNL was? <laughs> Back in the day, I was like, what a PNL? <laughs> profit and loss, Julia. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. Yeah. Uh, my dream. When she was my marketing <laughs> manager. <laughs> so... Actually, yeah, so so I'm like, okay, fine. So I'm like, let me bring it in. Then now the money that I use, it will cover my cost. So that I, it's like I have free skincare products. Yeah. I didn't know the power of my individual brand because I was so much ta- attached to over 25. So then the products come in. I post on my IG. I said, okay, I'll give myself a month until end month. And use easy too so that it can cover my costs. Mm-hmm. Dude, two hours. I want, I want. Hey. I was even, you know, I used to work here at the time. <laughs> so I'm calling the guy from the border. I'm like, Nicholas, I'm going to you do this and deliver for me these things. I'm sold. So I was like, okay, now let me bring 10. 10 more. Yeah. 10. Then I said, okay, I'll bring 20. So every time the wow. money comes, Narudisha, evil, evil. And then that's how the Glow Up Beauty Bar was born. Oh, wow. I started selling skincare mm-hmm. that was inspired by the 10 step skincare routine, Pachaki Horos video. And then I learned about Korean skincare from the internet, from YouTube. Wow. I didn't have a skincare routine. Wow. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. So that's for me, the internet has been huge. So then I started this business. Eventually I closed it down. It's something I would love to revive, mm-hmm. but that's different issues. The dollar really shot up during COVID. So I used to buy this stuff using dollars. I was buying at 103. By the time we were in the middle of 2020, it was 111. And now it's yeah. 122. And now it's yeah. 122. So I'm like, okay, this, this, I was, this, this menu was being transferred to the clients. Um, and then remember, I was not confident in myself. Mm. So I never used to say that Glock Beauty Bar is mine. I just used to push it on my page as if I'm pushing for somebody else's okay. business. I was not confident. So again, somebody told me, why aren't you putting yeah. your face in this? And because if it fails, I'll be associated with a failure. But that imagine, was think about Rihanna and Fenty. Babe, that's what I think about I mean, now. Yeah. If you think about Rihanna, in fact, the other day I was saying, I don't think Rihanna is going to sing again, again mm. right? Because she's making all this money from Fenty. Mm. And she's using her brand. And I remember when, I think it's a YouTube um, a tutorial, or there's a thing we're doing on YouTube, and they were telling us how Rihanna's built Fenty because she used to do the demos herself. Yeah, yeah. online. Online. On you YouTube. Don't need, you don't need... On you, YouTube. You don't need um, a, a rollout plan or... No, I did not need... I don't know. Yeah. Other people. Yeah. Herself, she understood her brand. Mm. She said her brand. She's an icon, of course, when it comes to beauty and beauty products. She's using her product. Mm-hmm. She, she does that online. She's now a billionaire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a yeah. billionaire. So please, you need to be the next billionaire. <laughs> please, get back there. Yeah, self-belief is something that... Um, now I'm like looking back at that girl, you know, two years ago. This is just two years ago. Mm. I'm like, why? Me now, even if I'm selling a pen, it is mine. I'm selling it. You buy it from me. Like I now I have that thing. 
but I, there was a fear of failure that I had mm. or, or, or the embarrassment of failure you understand and I, it's one of my cousins was like when you're starting something new embarrassment is a it's, it's, it's the a cost yeah. <laughs> you, you have to you, you might fail you might not fail mm. so like Mazik, people just ask me glop is yours glop is yours mm-hmm. so anyway I ended up the dollar affected me and then also I was there was too much going on at the time. I got kind of go back into employment to do a short, like I had a short term contract as a producer somewhere. Da, 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 da. So I, I, and I said, let me just put a pause on this. And I come back with a good business strategy. I didn't have a business strategy. I just went in and I was just like going whatever. So I put that on pause because skincare is something that you have to be very connected with your yeah. clients. Mm-hmm. Eh? Mm. But what the pandemic did for me is that um, I'd been doing that Dula Beauty Bar by the time the pandemic came, maybe for a year. And but during the pandemic, I got the most sales. That Nini, mm. I was getting revenue of a hundred G's in almost two just two weeks. Oh, wow! Yes, wow, yes, because now I think everyone was at home, mm-hmm. so like there's no makeup, you're not going anywhere. And that's, yeah. I think now people are looking at themselves, they're like, Hey, <laughs> wow, I need work, I need, to I need a 10 step routine because <laughs> I couldn't understand it. I'm like, yeah. How comes all of a sudden everyone is doing? Skin everyone care. is into skincare yeah. Yeah. and I, yeah. the, uh, my theory is that people who are at home and they're like other than making banana bread let me just make sure when I come out my skin is popping I'm looking glowing at when I come out of this glowing. pandemic so yeah. that's how I benefited from the pandemic and the internet I was able to start my own YouTube channel which I call my tiny little channel it still exists um, and then I started my I really pam- pam- hum- pumped up my stuff with my skincare business um, and all this I'm doing from the comfort of my home oh wow um Amazing. without having to go to the office right yeah but you get yeah, i do get sometimes you know i used to get some ptsd i'm like am i really working because me work was you wake up you sit in yeah. traffic <laughs> you suffer you go <laughs> and then you sit in meetings then you have a boss then you have a boss then, then you come home and then you get paid very little at the end of the month that's work. <laughs> so now me waking up at like 9 30 10 and then i'm like is this work is this uh, the money is rolling yeah. yeah. is the shoe going to fall yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that's yeah. actually one of the worst misconceptions i think so l- before we close, because I think we have really enjoyed this conversation, yeah. what's the one, well, or two tips that you would leave uh, for somebody who's starting this journey now? If they're looking at you, they're like, wow, you know, w- where would they start? What are the kind of things that you tell them? This is what you need to get going and get started on this journey. Um, this, this piece of advice always varies for me over time. You can ask me this question today. And ask it to me a year later is is a bit different because you I I think I've grown I grow so much within a short mm. period yeah. of time. Um, but if something if somebody wants to get into the content creation space, I think the first thing I do is that you have to get some time to you need to have a clarity phase of what what am I what am I really doing here? What's in fact I only got into what my thing is when I started my new podcast called So This Is Love. It's only been running for a month two episodes are out um because i was like what's my thing mm. i couldn't i couldn't i'm like what's my thing yeah and when i'd asked those people around me they'd be like you need a thing i'm like i don't but i feel like i want one mm. like when people look at jews they're like ah jews is the babe for fashion mm-hmm. ah jews is the babe for cars mm. people look at me and they're like we don't know where to place you. Yeah. But the feedback I was getting from the people around me was, you are uh, you're very inspirational. You're very much into like meditation and writing and self-improvement. That's something mm. I'm very into. So that's your thing. But I also, 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 I derive like 99% of my ideas and content from my past failed relationships. <laughs> Since, <laughs> oh, so yeah, we used to to this babe. I'm like, ah, another breakup. I don't know why I got wrong. <laughs> Little did I know, I'm going to have a YouTube channel and I'm like, you're going to make money. To you're going to make money. <laughs> I told you, I'm going to Issa Rae. Yeah. The hell out of my life. Think. That is it. Issa yeah. is That's a, the vision. Yeah, huh? Issa Rae is, is an actor. She's also a, a, a writer. She's one who did um, Insecure. Insecure. Oh, yeah. And she, she did from her, you know, from yeah. your greatest From your story. Despair, yeah, yes. that's Comes actually your greatest be- triumph. Would you say that again? From your really greatest powerful. despair comes your greatest triumph. Yeah. So the way you look at the pain in your life you can either decide to look at it like it's bad and for real it will always be bad basi. Right. But if you're like, surely God loves you. Mm-hmm. Me, I say, surely God loves me. Mm. So, upper, kuna something. 
You know how they say there's an there's an eye in every hurricane. Yeah. yeah. Th- there's some there's something mm. there. Yeah. Figure it out. So the first thing I'd say is just like figure out why you, your what and why. Mm-hmm. Figure that out. Have mm. that clarity phase. Mm. Um start with what you have. When we started, like I told you there was barely yeah. anything out there. But now I think there's that intimidation. Ah, sasa lazima ni kwenda lights, camera, action, green screen. What what? Yeah. No, 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 no. If you have a story within you and you have the intuitive nudge to start to be a creative, just start. Um, but I would also say I don't think that you need to leave employment to do these things because mm. I think that's now uh, I think people say leave and then do. I wouldn't even encourage anybody to just leave their job because that job is sustaining your lifestyle and mm. you're uh, you're able to survive because of that yeah so that gets me to the other thing that i'm saying is that community one thing i that tip i'd give is that you have to have a community mm. if you decide to get into this space that's new mm. and by community i mean people who can hold, hold you when the challenges come mm-hmm. because this is a new space yeah, yeah. um and like minded people mm. so yeah find your sh- get a, have a clarity phase make sure you have a support system and community and start with what you have mm. and believe your own hype don't do wow. my tiny little channel just do you my big channel listen do ah. you man <laughs> fantastic yeah. wow thank oh. you so much jules any parting so shot from you Kendi? yeah i know i'm just like my god thank you so much thank this is so. so inspiring i think yeah the one thing you've left with me is I, and I, and and I, i know we talk about it a lot is again just the reminder that there's challenges everywhere right Also I love the thing where you're talking about from your despair. Greatest despair comes your comes greatest, greatest triumph, triumph yeah. right? It must have because, happened somewhere. But it's beautiful because mm. that's what it is. Sometimes yeah. when you're in the in the in the, you know in, in despair, actually that's probably the prompt of greatness. That's where your greatness is. Yeah, so sometimes right. we we convince ourselves that everything should be rosy whether you're employed or not, whether you're doing your channel or not that it should be a bump free experience. But the fact that in that bump actually if you look at it in a different perspective this probably an opportunity so that's my parting shot yes like you said there's something you said choose the hill you want to die on yeah <laughs> yeah, pick, yeah. A pick yeah. a struggle yeah pick a, pick your struggle what's your parting shot my parting shot is that your passions can actually turn into profits mm. right so you're actually like i was saying you're you're a walking what is it bank you're a walking bank because you have actually made money out of what you have yourself your creative mind so yeah don't be afraid of um channeling your inner can i i want to say beyonce yeah <laughs> yes. it out. Not, yeah, not, beyonce. Rihanna. not rihanna no team beyonce like t- riri team beyonce. she left us hanging for years anyway <laughs> Anyway, yeah. She was so. building Fenty. She was make, becoming a billionaire. Yeah. Yeah, so it. thank you Jules. Thank you for having me. Right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And with that, I can close it up for you. Yeah. If you want to listen to more of this podcast, <laughs> I'm going to do it. Is that a, okay, on this okay. side? How we do it? Okay, do teach it. us, teach okay. us. Well, teach us your ways. Yeah, like thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you made it this far into the episode, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Please remember to subscribe, leave yeah. a review, that's how we'll grow and share with at least one or two people. Oh, there's no liking. There's no liking. Or it I depends. You can find us on Spotify. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can find us on Spotify, Google Podcasts. Apple podcast or wherever you find your podcast we'll oh, see wow. you back here next time adios what adios. a natural <laughs> cheers thanks guys mutu mia wanji big giga bundles ya so mobile data statement imenichanua kujua vile kila app inatumia bundles zangu so now i'm able to channel my bundles on the apps i need the most oh.